I want to deep dive a little bit more into this Harvey situation, right? Because they're largely labeling this guy as a crook, that he's worse than Tiffany Henyard, that he's no good. And so I want to spend 10 minutes, just 10. I don't want to have a long, long show today, but I just want to bring him to the front of the congregation because I think it's important for us to give everybody a fair shake. Don't you? It's a welder says, I just got paid today. We'll be a bag chaser immediately after work. Shout out to the new chasers. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Um, I'm curious. I am because I don't just want to go based off of a media narrative. I want to objectively, objectively is the most important word in this conversation. I want to objectively look at this thing and try to figure out, nope, this is not Chicago. Shout out to my dog, Fa Brown. This is not Chicago. This is Harvey. This is another city outside of Chicago. And so we can't pin this on Brandon Johnson. Brandon Johnson got enough of the nonsense that he got going on that he need to address. Shout out to you, Brandon Johnson, especially with these large gatherings. But I want to give Christopher Clark, that's his name, Mr. Clark. We like Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark is a name uh, that we got from Lean on me. If you're not strong, I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. Mr. Clark. Y'all remember, y'all ain't never seen that movie Lean on me? Y'all ain't never seen Mr. Clark steal from Juice was in there and he wanted to use drugs and Mr. Clark said, I'll throw you over the, I'll throw you over the. Y'all remember that? I got my movies mixed up, something like that. I don't know. But uh, Mr. Clark, I like the name Clark. When I see somebody with the last name Clark, I always say that must be a strong black man. Stand up, gentlemen. Stand up, gentlemen. You know what I'm saying? And so we're going to give Christopher Clark here a fair shake. We're going to give Christopher a fair, a fair shake, all right? Um, let's look at the latest, the latest and the greatest of what's happening over here in Harvey. Harvey, Illinois, all right? Look at me, boy. <laughs> Harvey, Illinois. We want to see what chaos is happening because I'm not just going to automatically put him in the same category as Tiffany Henyard. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. I mean, this man got a mustache and a beard, and he don't have a mohawk. How bad could he possibly be? Topping the 10 video you'll see only on two tonight, another southern suburb with chaotic confrontations at City Hall. We've told you about the ongoing investigations over spending in Dalton, often causing blowups between the mayor and residents. And tonight, tensions boiled over in Harvey. How dare you send your Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold up. We them boys. When you get a police officer that grab you by the back of your neck, then you doing like this on your way out the door. <laughs> hey, we need more police officers like that. Hey, when a police officer grab you on the back of your neck, you, listen, that's that, Yo, daddy, grab you talking to your mom. That's that. Oh, no, nah, we passed the belt stage. When you getting smart with your mama and your daddy walking and you didn't know your daddy was in the other room. And so he got that ninja creep up on you because he ain't got no house shoes on. And his feet is 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 as cold as grass in the morning. Do when a when a when a dude. <laughs> Before we get into Christopher Clark, when a man grab you by the back of your neck like this and you like this, ah, this is going to be the cover photo if we clip this up. Right here, this is my cover photo. Boy, that boy had that pistol grip pump on my lap at all times grip. Grabbed the back of that boy's neck and led him out, says, oh, you, oh, you going to overstep your boundaries? You, Yeah, shout out to good cops. When your daddy seen you talking to your mama and you felt like you was the man in the house and you said, I'm not taking it. 
led you into the other room, we call it the fish up to the ceiling. That's what we used to do. Fish up to the ceiling is when you grab somebody by their neck and you pick them up by their neck and so their feet is dangling in the air like this and we used to have them up to the fish up to the ceiling. What you say? Y'all ain't never heard of fish up to the ceiling? Yeah, we was good for that back in the day. Grab them by their neck, then their feet is like, let me down. It's called the fish up to the ceiling. That's some old school stuff. That's from the 90s. Man, y'all might not be familiar with that. I know a lot of y'all are some of these younger millennials, Gen Zs or whatever. But don't get a fish up to the ceiling. Don't let a dude like this, old school, got them rolls on the back of his neck. Shoulders broad, tattoo on the back of his arm, meaning that he might have been a Melvin at some point in this time. Y'all don't know who Melvin is? Melvin was from uh, Baby Boy. Remember when Tyrese was talking and, he, and Tyrese got comfortable? He said, yeah, I thought so. And then Melvin came through and grabbed him by his neck. Jody, Jody, call your mama. Call your mama. If we was on lockdown, I'd make you. <laughs> <laughs> Jody, he grabbed him like, Mel that's, that's Melvin, that's a Melvin. Be careful dealing with Melvins. That's the whole, listen, this whole segment has changed. The lesson here has nothing to do with Christopher Clark. The lesson here is watch out for Melvins. They everywhere. They everywhere. And the signs is the roll on the back of the neck, the broad shoulders. When they get calm, the calm before the storm, they don't want to talk about it. They itching for it because they 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 reform, they change, they're trying to make sure that their life is different, but they definitely up for action because they kind of miss it because it's just in their DNA. Watch out for Melvin's. Grab that boy by his neck and let him out the front door. Hey, and he caught himself. So he realized, oh shoot, we in front of the people. I can't really do what deal with him the way I want to deal with him. Business owners there say they're being slapped with unnecessary fees, but city leaders say they need the money. CBS 2's Charlie DeMar live for us in the control room, hearing from both sides tonight. Charlie? And Joe and Erica, some of the frustration in Harvey is over the mayor's plan to collect on delinquent property taxes. Some of the business owners we spoke to today say their business licenses have been withheld in exchange for a fee, calling the program extortion. But to us, this is where everything started. Benicia Gonzalez hasn't been able to open her auto repair business in South Suburban Harvey since May. From one day to the next, we were forced to shut down and um, the sign was put on our window. The shop, which has been in Gonzalez's family for over two decades, had its business license renewal denied because they owe property taxes. Mm. I'm doing everything that I can in my power to pay these tax bills that was left behind, but you know, I'm only 24 years young and I'm, I'm doing what I can do. But Harvey business. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, and see, this is the problem. This is the problem. Because like some of y'all are saying in the chat, y'all saying, oh, well, DJ Ace Productions, you, you know, you my guy, but we just gonna have to look at this objectively. Y'all saying legal extortion. I don't see any legal extortion right now. I see a woman, let me tell you what I see. I see a woman that feels entitled because her family had the business for a long time and they owe property taxes. And so usually what happens is when you owe money, it's very difficult to get a renewal on whatever it is that you're supposed to do because the city is not seeing a fair share. That's the business. That's the business. What this sounds like to me is that she's in over her head. What this sounds like to me and I could be wrong. I'm not just going to automatically take the side of the people just because they complaining about it, just because they over there or whatever. If you owe, you owe money, where's my money? And we don't even know how far behind. And then she gonna, all she got to say is, I'm doing the best that I can. No, that ain't how the business world works. That's not how it works. You don't pay when you want to. You pay what's, what's owed and what's due. And so it's honestly... For her, in particular, this one particular woman that they're interviewing, it sounds like she's in on her head, in over her head, and she don't know what she's doing. And you needed to actually go and get educated and study and understand how to look at things from a business perspective, because if you owe property taxes, that don't mean that you just get to continue to run your business. 
If you owe money to the city, if you owe fees, I can't just open up a restaurant and then I could just start cooking. Nope, you got to go through inspections. You got to make sure that you get a business license. You got to make sure you get approved for the city. You got to go and get food licenses. You got to make sure that you go through the state and the health department approved all of this stuff. You got to come and, come and get regular inspections. You got to make sure you pay your rent. I can't just go and open up a business and open up a... Oh, I got to meet the requirements and the expectations from the city or whatever the county is that I'm doing business in. So you can't just sit here and say, oh man, that he a bad guy because he's holding up business licenses. No, you got to do your part as far as paying your, your fees. I'm trying to understand. Listen, listen, listen. I understand that it's, it's things that could be done. So maybe he needs to be, um, you know, a lot more business friendly as far as working with the businesses to try to incentivize them or to help them put them in a position where they can more effectively pay them, put them on a payment plan. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm not going to sit here and automatically say that he's a bad guy because when I say a politician is a bad person, it's based off of corruption. It's not based off of whether or not you disagree with the legislative policies that apply to you in your city. Now, we could look at Tiffany Henyard and say, yeah, she was on trips to Vegas and she was hiding up affairs and somebody got assaulted on her watch and you know what I'm saying? And she over there finessing and she's leveraging this and she's using it and, and finessing the money in order to have a personal stylist. And you know what I'm saying? She, she's overpaying herself and she's trying to reduce the amount of money in order to uh, for somebody, if they was to unseat her for them to get elected. We can look at that and say that's that's corruption. That is something that you are illegally using taxpayer money to do. But if the only accusation that you have against this man and y'all trying to kill his name based off of the idea that you owe money to the city, but you still want to be able to do business, and he's not letting you, and he's saying that the city actually needs his money because infrastructure, employees, inspectors, people that work at City Hall, all of those people have to get paid in order for a city to run effectively. Water. I'm not really seeing how he's now worse than Tiffany Henyard. I'm not going, for, as of right now, I don't see it. But you know, I'm only 24 years young and I'm, I'm doing what I can do. Harvey business owners Not in a excuse. similar position were offered a settlement agreement with the city. Pay $2,500 a month and keep your business open. You say, come on, if you don't mind coming yeah. here. We caught okay, up. Okay, so that's what he did. He did what exactly what I just said. He said every the business owners was offered a settlement agreement because they're not paying whatever it is that they're supposed to be paying to the city. So what he said was, listen, here's a settlement agreement. Pay this amount per month and then you can get your business license back. And the people said, oh, no, we won't go. That's not extortion. That's actually working with the people. Up with Harvey Mayor Christopher Clark as he left a special city council meeting. The only thing we're asking is for those businesses to pay their property taxes and stop using our city services for free. It's so, okay, all right, so now, this is why, thank you, sister, I appreciate you, baby. I'm gonna read that super chat shortly. All right, so, pay attention to the headlines, y'all. Be very careful of how they paint you, because anybody can create a headline, and anybody can create a narrative, and the news can say something based off of what everybody is saying in order to get clicks and views. But objectively speaking, and this is why we have to mine out all of the details, He's basically saying, listen, y'all using city services for free, whatever those services are, you're using city services for free, but you're not paying property taxes in order to make sure that we can continue to serve you. You're basically creating what we call a death loop in the city. The city is falling into debt, continuing to service your businesses, but at the same time, you're not paying property taxes that you're supposed to be paying that you agreed to in order to be able to do business in the city itself. So I'm not really understanding why they going after this guy. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to co-sign it just because it's the popular thing to do. I'm going to objectively look at every single thing that they're saying, and we're going to analyze it, and we're going to break it down. And as of right now, I don't see what the issue is. To pay their property taxes and stop using our city services for free. It's unethical, right? I can't say it's illegal, but it certainly seems unethical. Harvey Alderwoman Colby Chapman, a vocal critic of Mayor Christopher Clark. I don't have any discussion. I just want you to Thank you very much. Says the underserved suburb is at times dysfunctional. Serve the people 
and know that we're elected to be here for the people. So Pastor Jonathan Johnson says he was in disbelief when he was told his church would need to register for a business license. It was almost $700. I said, where did this come from? We are federally and, and state exempt from taxes. And I really do feel like it's more of a dictatorship here in the city of Harvard. No, I look at it as you finessing. Pay your $700 and go and get your business license. Now, I don't know exactly how nonprofits work when it comes to these cities and all of this stuff, but um, I think that a lot of these churches be finessing and, and they be profiting and stuff like that. So I don't really agree with it, but I don't know. Let's continue to hear it. Harvey, at this point. How dare you send your police after Minutes into the city council meeting, someone in the <laughs> audience was removed by police at the direction of Mayor Clark. Officers handcuffed the man and led him out of city hall. I'm the chair and I am responsible for keeping the order. If people in the audience or in the um, council do not want Man, to keep that order, down, big then dog. they will be removed. I'm calling on every state official. We need help. We need strong oversight. No, you don't. No, no. And maybe no, you don't. Kobe Chapman. What's her name? Kobe Chapman. Let me see if I can get Kobe Chapman. I'm pretty sure it's, it's difficult um, to get these people up on here. You know what, I'm going to start scheduling these people in order to really be able to. Uh... <sighs> Harvey. I'm going to try to get these people on the platform. I want to hear what they got to say. I want to hear what they got to say. I'm interested in talking to these people. Kobe Chapman, City Council, Harvey. Let's see if I can get them on the phone. Thank you for calling the City of Harvey. Press 1 for Senior Services. Press 2 for the police department. Press 3 for human resources. Press 4 for the water department. Press 5 for public works. Press 6 for the mayor's office. Press 7 for Lewis Williams. Press 8 for building inspectional services. Press 9 for the clerk's office. Nothing has been selected. Thank you for calling. Oh, I'm calling the wrong number. Hold on. Let's do it like this. Why don't none of these representatives answer the phone? Sorry, the person you were trying to reach has a voicemail box that has not been set up yet. Please. I'll send them an email. I'll see if I can get these people on the platform. We're going to start having real life interviews on the Millionaire Morning Show of all of these people that keep accusing people of what's going on. And we're going to go from there. All right. So I don't see anything wrong with what it is that he's doing. I don't have a problem with him as of the review of this video in particular. Um, I'm not seeing what the issue is. So. If people just upset because they're not paying their bills and then he enforcing the law, then I don't see what the problem is.